Wendell, I do not watch TV. Should I be watching TV since I've got this free NAS box sitting in the other room and it only does a few things? Should I put it to use and watch TV? No. <laughs> no, well, let's not even make the video then. Uh, what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna show you how to uh, turn your home server into something ridiculous and amazing using just a few tools. It uh, basically can grab all your media, put it in one spot, and then allow you to ingest it in the most efficient way possible. So, Wendell, you're going to walk us through this because I really don't use um, my my media server this way, or I don't I don't really use a media server at all. So, um, a lot of people out there are going to want to know how to do this. So, what do we do? Okay. So, the key ingredient here is your free NAS or other home media server. A lot of people really like Synology or one of the other ones. That's fine. I've got to build it personally. So um, the FreeNAS home server, one component of that is the plugins that you can install. And one plugin you can install is Plex Media Server. Now, Plex Media Server can be installed on a Windows home server or a Windows you know, 7 machine that you got in the corner or uh, Synology, I think, supports it as well. Um, so it's, Plex is not really a new thing, but it's a media server, and your uh, home server becomes sort of the central repository of all of your media, all of your TV, movies, music, pictures, vacation photos, you know, home movies, stuff from your cell phone, the whole nine yards can be on your FreeNAS box. It's actually really pretty. It's a nice, elegant implementation. So one of the things uh, that you can do with this is just figure out where all your media comes from. So one of the other plugins available for FreeNAS is BitTorrent Sync. And so all the movies and photos and stuff like that uh, that I take with my phone automatically gets synced to this thing and then I can browse it on the network and see it and you know it's in the home movies section and all that kind of stuff you can set up those rules where it processes those kind of things but it also knows about TV shows so it can fetch meta data about the TV shows like uh, the air dates and stuff like that so then the problem becomes how do you get television onto it and that is sort of the next piece of the puzzle yeah you're going to need to capture it in some way so, in order to capture it, what are we going to do? Well, I think we're, we're going to talk about how you build a uh, TV capture machine from uh, a distribution of Linux called Mythbuntu. And so you have another computer that you set up with a capture card, a hardware capture card that can capture, you know, um, component video. And uh, you set up that computer with Mythbuntu. And so that computer is aware of your listings and can change channels in your cable box and then can record things automatically. Now, the, the RIAA and the MPAA have lately have been going after even companies that make DVD transcoding software. Like, they're saying it's not okay to transcode DVDs. So, you know, definitely check with what's legal in your jur jurisdiction and, you know, what, what, you know, don't take our word for it. Only, you know, make sure you know what you're doing. But um, capturing directly from cable television is one way that you can populate your media library with high def content and and what is almost in almost all jurisdictions um, illegal. But don't take our word for it. You know, know what the local jurisdictions rules are for capture. But if you can capture from television, it's a fast, easy, cheap way to collect stuff that you want. And then and you know some of the more marginal shows that I might have bought the DVD box sets for. It's like, oh, it's on cable television. I can just capture it. Now, the cool thing with Mythbuntu is that it'll actually flag the commercials for you, and you can set up a transcode job so that it'll actually delete the commercials for you as well. That's insane. Well, that's going to make them really angry because all the commercials are going to be gone. I mean... Yeah, so what happens is your your box, your your Mythbuntu DVR is like a digital VCR, a digital VCR that's self-programming. So with your old VCR where you could enter a time code or whatever and it would record, with Mythbuntu, you browse a web interface that's the listings. You have to sign up for an account with Schedules Direct, which gives you your um, your individual listings for your local area. It'll work with Dish or or whatever. And then you have a hardware capture card that can capture high def TV signals like that. This hot pog PVR, it's Linux compatible. Check the Mythbuntu wiki to know which hardware is compatible. There are some HDMI devices that are compatible, but with HDMI, you may have a, a right protect flag on the HDMI signal. And so that would prevent you from recording HDMI. But with component video, which is what the HD PVR uses, um, it's analog. So it's the analog hole that all these executives are scared to death of, of plugging. This this right here is what they're scared of and they don't want in the digital age, but has been legal since the VCR. 
So what you're doing is basically capturing video. And then once it's captured, it's sort of transcoded and, and compressed into a more friendly format and then put on your network server. And when you put it on your network server, Plex will help you organize it, rename it, clean up the name, that kind of thing. All right, now let's talk about uh, actually using this content and ingesting it. I, just before we move on, uh, to simplify this for people like me who really have no idea what TV is, I've never actually owned a DVR window. I have no idea how this stuff works, but essentially what we're doing here is you're building your own DVR using your own uh, capture device like the Hopog that would be like, you know, just something you put on top of your computer. And then the operating system of the DVR is the MythBun 2. That's pretty much the same equivalent as... Uh, you know, a DVR you get from your uh, cable provider and you log in and you see everything in there. That's the same thing. And is that pretty much it? Because I'm an idiot with this stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And the convenience is that, you know, if you like if you like movies like Ghostbusters or, you know, Ghostbusters 2 or whatever, those are going to show up on cable sooner or later. So you can set some rules as like, you know, next time you see Ghostbusters, record that off TV. Or next time you see this TV show, record that off TV. And then just let the thing go. And, you know, after a year or two, you've got a pretty solid media collection. And then when your friends come over and it's like, oh, yeah, do you remember that episode of whatever? And you just click on it. It's like, oh, there it is. Yeah. Um, all right. So how do we control this? Well, the uh, the best way. So you've got the front end. Now, Myth TV can be a front end. Like you can hook it up to a television and a home theater and you can use it with a remote. And that works OK. But me personally, I prefer XBMC. Now, XBMC will run on a Raspberry Pi, and it supports uh, uh, Plex, and you can play back from, from Plex and UPnP and things like that. You can also, with Plex, play back on a PlayStation 3. You've got to jump through a couple more configuration hoops, but uh, that means that your NAS also has to be powerful enough to support transcoding. Now, the ASRock Abiton, the 8-core that we looked at, that was amazing at that. I was transcoding for four tablets at the same time, and it didn't bog it down. <laughs> there's also a less expensive board that only has four cores. So, I mean, if eight cores is overkill, there's a four-core board for you as well. Now, the X, that, uh, that atom there, that's, that's ridiculous. It's eight cores. Like, for a freaking atom, why can't they make an eight-core uh, regular desktop instead of an SOC version? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, in benchmarks, and a lot of the kind of benchmarks that matter for this thing, it's it's about as fast as a Xeon, which is crazy. But, you know, it's eight cores versus four, I guess, in the Xeon. But but still, I mean, it's, it's pretty powerful. And, um, and I'll use, well, speaking of power, it uses a lot uh, less power than, like, an AMD 8350. Yeah, yeah. If when you uh, that uh, the ASRock board didn't even have a supplemental 12 volt power connector, it just has the regular you know 24 pin ATX connector, and that was it. All right, so you're capturing everything with MythBun 2, um, and you're using something like a Hopog to capture it, or a separate machine that's you know running that. You're using Plex Media to organize everything on your uh, NAS or whatever, and then you're using something like or possibly XBMC uh, as your front end. Yes. That's that's pretty much the three key ingredients here. Now, uh, let's say you want to you know browse different schedules, right? Mm -hmm. What do we so use? Browsing different, like if you want to browse your upcoming TV schedules, um, there is a uh, on your MythBuntu computer. There's a thing called MythWeb running, and so you just go to the IP address of your MythBuntu computer, and you get a cool web interface where you can see what's coming up, and you can uh, schedule recordings and stuff like that. If you want to see what's already in your media library, there's a Plex, uh, Plex web site that comes with the Plex media server. And so you can see and control your media server from the web as well. But there's also apps for iOS and Android. You can install the Android app or the iOS app. Now, I think they're like five bucks, but they go on sale a lot. So keep your eye out for that. Um, if you get the app, then you can control uh, all of your stuff uh, and, and manage your media and things like that from the app. But I'll tell you, if you get like the Google Nexus 7 or something like that, the web interface actually works fine. If you don't want to buy the app, you can actually just use the website on the tablet and it'll stream the media over HTML5 and it's fine. Yeah. So, and there's also schedules direct, which is a, that's pretty much what MythBun2 does when you're, you know, when you're oh, yeah, using schedules, it to browse. Schedules direct is where MythBun2 gets its listings from. So you need an account there. It's like, five bucks a month, something like that. You pay a year at a time. It may, it's probably not even that much. It's 25 probably, bucks a year, yeah. 25 bucks a year, okay. So you get your schedules direct thing, and then Mythbuntu is able to download two, your, you know, two weeks of television listings, and then from there you can browse and set all your stuff. But uh, it'll give you the television listings for your local cable company, Dish Network, DirecTV, whatever. 
and that's how it knows when to turn on what and, and what to record. Now, this sounds, to me, it sounds like a, a lot of stuff and a lot of hoops to jump through. Uh, I mean, how easy is all this to put together? It sounds a little bit intimidating, Wendell. I think that if you do one thing a weekend, you don't try to do too much, you can get it done in a couple of weekends. It is a lot to do, but um, if they made it any easier, it would be illegal. I mean, <laughs> the RIA, the MPA were taking down, like, any DVD and the other transcoding things, and so they'd probably be upset if it were any easier. But you start with your home server, you've got your home server, and then you deploy Plex. That's a couple of mouse clicks. If you want to do that and you want to get your media some other way, you can just drag and drop media to your FreeNAS machine. You've got a couple mouse clicks to install Plex. You're done. Then you just need a front end. That can be XBMC, but you've got the Plex web front end and all that. So that is really easy. The next weekend's project would be setting up MythBuntu. I think what I'm going to do for this, since I don't watch any television at all, but I do have you know a, a decent movie uh, collection. I had a bunch of DVDs at one point, and I you know um, used Handbrake to encode all those as MP4s. So what I think I'm going to do for, with this is I'm going to put them all into the folders, get Plex Media Server running, and then I'll run uh, XBMC. And also, I really like the XBMC app here, so I'll probably run that on the uh, the Nexus 7 that I've got a Lenovo, Lenovo tablet. Um, so I'll probably run that on both of those. And just use that from now on whenever I'm ingesting movies and media and whatever else. The cool thing about XBMC is that uh, it can be a remote, the app, when you install it on your phone, it turns your phone into a remote control for the Raspberry Pi. Ooh, that's pretty wild. Um, and what about the Plex for Android? Do you need both of those on your, uh, you know, on your phone if you're using one or the other? I mean, XBMC would pretty much take the place of Plex for Android, right? Well, XBMC is really like you would run that on the Raspberry Pi, and then the XBMC app um, is, is I use it as a remote control, although it does have a limited ability to stream content and deal with content. I think the Plex app does a better job with the content itself, but the XB allows your playlist, put playlists together and things like that. For home stereo, uh, the XBMC is really cool because you can, you know, you get a really slick interface for setting up your playlist. You know, it's like setting up the mood music or whatever, and then you just hit the playlist on your phone and then it, it takes over like a remote control on the XBMC side. So it's pretty neat. Cool. I think we covered everything. We could probably end it now and send them on their way. Yeah, it's like if you want to see how to build a home server, check out the, you know, check out the ASRock videos for some good ideas on, on where to start from components. Check out the FreeNAS build video for getting started there. And if you guys are interested enough, we'll probably do a myth, a separate video on MythBuntu. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, we hope that this has uh, helped you in some way. Maybe now you're gonna be off on your way to controlling your media library. And uh, you know, if you guys want a separate video on just MythBuntu and just setting some of these little pieces up, maybe setting up the Raspberry Pi, uh, let us know if there's enough feedback. Maybe we'll, uh, you know, do some of that, give you guys a, a closer focus on just one or two key components. But this should give you an overall idea of just some of the things that are available out there, so you can get uh, a little more organized. And um, if you're looking to build a system, uh, the the ASRock systems that are the ASRock motherboards and systems that you've been looking at, Wendell, uh, those look like they do a hell of a job. Or you could build your own free NAS system, and we probably want to use all these things in combination. Just grab, yeah, grab everything. Yeah, the, the great thing about both of the ASRock solutions is that you can run free NAS on them. They're both, you know, you got Xeon, which is massive overkill if you want to, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Then yeah. you got the Atom solution as well, but that Atom is fast enough if you want to run Windows Home Server, or you want to run Linux, or you want to run, you know, something else. You totally can. You maybe some you know NAS for free is your thing. You can totally run that on there as well. Look for support for media servers like Plex. I mean, in free in uh, free NAS, it's really easy. It's just a couple of mouse clicks. But a lot of NAS software supports it. I mean, if you install Windows Home Server, you can install the Windows version. There's other cool things like a PS3 media server and things like that. So there's a ton of different software out there. And this is more just sort of an overview recipe to give you some ideas of the kind of things you can do. Having the DVR on autopilot and letting it just sort of collect media for you recorded from the television is really sort of a cool thing because I don't really watch much TV either. But when I sit down with friends or whatever and I look, it's like, oh, it's recorded like 60 things and it's gotten rid of the commercials and I'm ready to go. It's like, wow, that's that's neat. It's Plex is available for, for uh, Chromecast as well. I had no idea. Yeah, you can use your Chromecast instead of a Raspberry Pi, but... Yeah. So anyway, tons of options, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoy the content you see, please consider becoming a member of TechSport. That's right over here, and that helps us out a lot. And then there's some other links over here. You can click on those as well if you enjoy the music and, and whatnot. We will see you guys next time.